Now, the Constitutional Court will hand down judgment on Stellenbosch University's 2016 language policy, giving preference to English over Afrikaans in certain circumstances in Johannesburg today. The university adopted the policy in order to advance equal access, multilingualism and integration. Now, the pressure group, the Gelecha Hansa uh, Equal Opportunities, is opposed to the policy. Approached the High Court seeking an order reviewing and setting aside the 2016 policy and reinstating its predecessor, the 2014 policy. The High Court dismissed the application. It found that the university's obligations under Section 29, Sub 2 of the Constitution are limited to providing Afrikaans education where reasonably practicable and through reasonable educational alternatives. First, the High Court held that white Afrikaans and white English speakers are the beneficiaries of apartheid. This is of particular importance as the Constitution and the LPHE are mandated to address past discrimination. The High Court held further that in determining whether the provisions of education in an official language of choice is, quote, reasonably practicable in terms of Section 29.2 of the Constitution, the state must take into account what is fair, feasible, and satisfies the need to remedy the results of past discriminatory laws and practices. Second, the assessment of what is reasonably practicable requires consideration both of resource constraints, constraints and logistics, which is the factual criterion, and also of equity, redress, and non-racialism, which is the constitutional or normative cr criterion. The High Court found that the 2014 policy was not equitable as, as it denied black students access to the university. Third, the High Court held that the national language policy for higher education was important as a guiding document but was not binding on the university. In this case, the High Court held that the university had adequately justified its departure from the national language policy but that the 2016 policy is in any event consistent with it due to their common focus on ensuring equitable access. The applicants approached the Constitutional Court for direct leave to appeal against the judgment and order of the High Court. They for further sought an order setting aside the 2016 policy on grounds that it violates Section 29 sub 2 and that it also contravenes other constitutional provisions including Section 6 sub 2, 6 sub 4, the Equality Clause, and other provisions of the Bill of Rights. Three judgments were prepared. The main judgment is a unanimous judgment penned by Cameron Jay, with whom the Chief Justice, myself, Jafta Jay, Kampepe Jay, Madlanga Jay, Matopo AJ, Mflantla Jay, Tron J and Victor AJ concurs. It finds that the 2016 policy was constitutionally justified. Reasonably practical in section 29 involves both a factual and normative or constitutional element. This court finds that the constitutional criterion of reasonable practicality, practicability is to be judged objectively and that it requires an approach founded in evidence. The constitutional test of, quote, reasonably practicability is synonymous with the test of appropriate justification. The former as the positive duty to fulfill the right and the latter dealing with the negative duty not to take it away once it has been enjoyed. In this case, the university's motivation and judgment on costs satisfied both the factual and normative elements envisaged by the provision. The evidence the university present, presented showed that near universally, brown and white Afrikaans speaking first year entrants to the university are able to be taught in English. Conversely, though most, are, most entrants are able to receive tuition in Afrikaans, a significant, a significant minority cannot. The 2014 policy created an exclusionary hurdle for specifically black students studying at the university. The evidence also showed that separate classes in English and Afrikaans 
or single classes conducted in Afrikaans with translation from Afrikaans into English made black students not conversant in Afrikaans feel marginalized, excluded, and stigmatized. This court finds that the university's process in adopting the 2016 policy was thorough, exhaustive, inclusive, and properly deliberative. The university's determinative motivation for introducing the 2016 policy was to facilitate equitable access to its campus, its teaching and learning opportunities by black students who are not conversant in Afrikaans. The university's decision-making structures, with a scrupulous eye on racial equity, access and inclusiveness, judged that a downward adjust adjustment of Afrikaans without by any means eliminating it was warranted, and taking into account the overall needs of the institution, the cost of avoiding the down adjustment was too high. In light of this evidence, this court finds that retaining the 2014 policy was not reasonably practicable for the university. The exclusion of non-Afrikaans speakers from full participation in tuition and other institutional benefits was a legitimate basis for upgrading English while continuing to offer significant tuition in Afrikaans, even while sacrificing, sacrificing the previous primacy of Afrikaans. On section 6.2 and 6.4, this court notes that the flood tide of English risks jeopardizing the precious value of our entire indigenous linguistic heritage. This is because the march of history, both in South Africa and globally, seems relentlessly hostile to minority languages, including Afrikaans. But that cost cannot be directly the university's burden. This court notes that we should not miss the cost that the diminution of Afrikaans at Stellenbosch University entails, not only for Geleike Kansa and its adherents, but for our world and for ourselves. In sum, this court finds that it is permissible under section 29 sub 2, where tuition is being offered in an official language of choice at a public educational institution, to, dim to diminish that offering while not extinguishing it in order to enhance equitable access for, access for those not conversant in that language when the institution shows the cost of non-diminution too high. <coughs> A separate concurrence by the Chief Justice, with Cameron Jay concurring, agrees that it was neither reasonably practicable nor equitable to maintain the position as it was before the 2016 policy came into being. Additionally, the understanding and application of reasonable practicability and the need for equitable access to education stood to be guided by this Court's articulation of these principles in AFRI Forum versus Free State University. His concurrence also emphasizes the need to develop all indigenous languages, including the spoken languages of the First Nation people. The Chief Justice further appeals to corporate citizens' spirit of generosity to help pres preserve Afrikaans and develop other indigenous languages as its essential tools for knowledge impartation and comprehension by deploying resources to the establishment of private learning institutions envisaged by section 29.3 of the Constitution. I wrote a further concurring judgment with which Cameron Jay also concurred uh, in both English and Afrikaans that agrees with both the reasoning and the outcome of the first judgment. My concurrence draws out the implication of the entrenchment of English dominance as a medium of instruction for the diminished use and protection of minority indigenous languages. It sounds the caution that we should not give up on the Constitution's dream of using our own languages in all spheres of life. In the result, the following order is made. One, leave to appeal is granted. Two, the appeal is dismissed, with no order as to costs in this court. Three, the costs orders in the High Court are set aside. 
For, in their place is substituted, quote, there is no order as to costs. I end on the judgment.